welcome back in the previous video we derived some simple expressions for the linear model recall that we were looking at the inverse problem in a slab where we are given thermocouple measurements at a few locations and uh, we are asked to find out the actual temperature so what you are asked to estimate is the heat flux and the boundary temperature so we will try to answer this question using the expressions that we derived the last time please notice that uh, there was an error in the previous video for w not i had actually uh, this was off by uh, a negative sign okay so i think i had put a minus sign up here and a plus sign here it's the other way around so what's written here is actually accurate the previous video was wrong so these are the correct expressions um so you can note that down so these two are correct now okay okay so that's just a small note i had also told you that in the last video that there are slightly differing uh, expressions that you will see usually you would have already seen this in textbooks like i said many people in school do statistics and you might have an expression there and this is very similar to that except i am using averages here and uh, the school expressions or you might see it in other places also beginning statistics textbooks tend to use some uh, the, the summation instead of the average and i'll write those expressions so expressions using um, summation instead of average these are perfectly equivalent uh, expressions so i am going to write the same thing involving sums rather than averages here so let me write the expression now so w1 is the number of data points m multiplying sigma xy summation is all over the number of uh, examples multiplied by sigma x multiplied by sigma y the whole thing divided by m times sigma x square minus sigma x the whole square okay so you will see that it is more or less identical to the expression here wherever there was x y bar we have a summation and basically you can actually quickly find out that at a few places you are going to get m which is the number of data points okay so we collect that now similarly we can write an expression for w not also w not is given by sigma y sigma x square uh, technically speaking i should put xi yi here also again i am skipping that uh, assuming that you understand the context of writing this minus sigma xi yi sigma xi divided by m sigma xi square minus sigma xi the whole square so these are the expressions uh, that we have now what we want to find out is the heat flux and the boundary temperature so what we need to do with this is actually calculate so given the data calculate w0 and w1 and from here estimate all other quantities now what are the quantities we want to estimate we want to estimate the temperatures 
let's say I have only asked for TL, which is the right hand side temperature, but let's say we want T0, TL, and we actually want estimates for this, and we also wanted estimate of the heat flux. Now, how would we calculate these? Let's see that uh, just shortly. But once we have the model, once you have the model of T hat being W0 plus W1x, obviously you can find out T at x equal to 0, T at x equal to the length, which is 0 0.07 as given in the question. And then you can find out Q as minus K dt dx. We'll to uh, do that within this video in the next slide. Okay. So now suppose we come here and we use the summation expression. So we use if we use expressions for W0 and W1, which involve either average of x, y, uh, x square average, etc., etc. We have all these within here. So if we involve all that, we basically look at this table. So I have made a table. Again, you would have been used to some such thing within your school. Please notice the parameters of this table. Here is the serial number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is how we are going to simply write down data. Here is the single variable over which the data depends, the location. Here is the T experimental temperature or what we are calling Y here. Um, this is the noted down temperature here and then the auxiliary quantities which we require for the expressions shown here, which is sigma xy, sigma x square, etc. Okay, so sigma x and sigma y are already available. We also want xy and sigma x square. Okay, so if we look at these expressions, we see sigma, notice this, this term then becomes sigma x. This term here is sigma y, this term here is sigma xy, and this term here is sigma x square. Now, using these expressions, I will not actually put these in here. You can calculate what W0 and W1 are. If you calculate these quantities, they come out to sigma, uh, so W0 comes to 15.9787. If you calculate it and uh, W1, you can calculate this to minus 83.9143. Now you can use an Excel sheet as I have shown here, or you can use a MATLAB program, which I'll show you in the next week, how to write a simple MATLAB program to calculate this. But we will use uh, uh, this technique as well as a couple of other techniques to in order to come to the same conclusion. So I want to use MATLAB during that time. But for now, let's assume you are doing these calculations either by hand or by using an Excel sheet. If you are doing the assignments and taking this course for credit, um, you can do the assignments using any technique that you want. Okay, so I don't really care. Uh, in the final exam, if you take this course again for credit, then we will figure out how to give you calculator uh, to in order to compute these reasonably fast. Okay, so once you come here, we get these values as I wrote down in the previous slide. W0 is 15.9787 and W1 is minus 83.9143. <coughs> okay. Now, once you have these values, we can now determine, as I said, the temperatures. And so suppose I ask the question, what is T0? That is the temperature on the left boundary. Okay, so temperature at the right boundary. Now notice, as far as the measurements are concerned, we don't have that value. We only have thermocouple values in the middle of the slab, 0 0.01 up till 0 0.06. We don't have the value at the left or the value at the right. Okay, so this, however, is at the location x equal to 0. This is at the location x equal to 0 0.07. Okay, so if we plug in these values, we now notice T0 is, so remember the temperature, this is our model, the temperature is W0 plus W1x, so T0 will be W0 plus W1 at x equal to 0, so this is simply W0 and that gives us the temperature which is 15 point approximately 15.98 
degree centigrade. The temperature at the right end, Tl, can be calculated similarly. This is simply the temperature, predicted temperature at x equal to L, which is T hat at x equal to 0 0.07, since the length of the slab is 70 mm. So this then becomes W0 plus W1 multiplied by 0 0.07. If you calculate this, this comes to 10.10 degree Celsius approximately. You can see both these reflected in the graph that I have shown here. You see around 15.97. So this happens to be the best fit which I have drawn. So this happens to be the best fit I had written. This was the visual best fit. But actually speaking, I calculated this explicitly with the coefficients here with W0 equal to 15.97 and uh, W1 equal to negative 83.91. So that's how these lines were drawn. You can notice that the temperature at the right end is 10 point something and on the left, uh, temperature is some 15 point something. That's what we have now found out. Now, finally, the all important question, really speaking for a heat transfer engineer is, what is the estimated heat flux? So the estimated heat flux, Q is minus K dt at dx. Now, T hat is W0 plus W1x. This tells us that dt dx equal to W1. So this is minus k times W1. The value of k is given within the question to be 14.4. Okay. So if you actually plug this in, 14.4 minus 14.4 into minus 83.91, which is the value of W1 you will get approximately 1208.4 watt per meter square. Okay, so this is the estimated heat flux. So this is really a very, very, very simple example of how an inverse problem is solved. Uh, so just to recapitulate, you were given a series of uh, locations and a series of thermocouples. You basically built a model and said it was linear. Based on that linear model, we found out the best possible coefficients W0 and W1 by solving a linear regression problem. And uh, we actually derived the uh, analytical expressions in the last video. Once we derived that, we can now find out this W0 and W1, the numerical values. Once the numerical values were found, we can now derive the quantities which correspond to the left temperature, right temperature, and the estimated heat flux. This is in a nutshell, very similar to how the inverse process will take place, at least for the sequence of problems we'll be doing. Like I said, within the last week, we will also deal with slightly more sophisticated inverse problems. But uh, the preliminary aim of this course is to introduce you to these wide variety of techniques which already exist. And uh, though this problem is simple, it's a problem we will return to multiple times because it's a very, very simplified thing that we can use and solve things by hand to understand various techniques. Now, as I said in the previous video, this does not tell us how to go ahead and do quadratic models, how to do cubic models or other polynomial models. And another question that I have not yet addressed is, well, we can see that this line somehow fits the data, but how good is this line? So these questions will be handled in the uh, coming few videos within this week. Thank you.